Well, thank you very much for the honor of being able to stand here. It's, it's a, a daunting place because you want to make sure that you bring in the word of God. So hands up for those who love change. Hands up for those who don't love change. And hands up for those people that don't like, want to put their hands up. <laughs> okay, this morning as I was preparing for this message, it's been a, a, a message uh, and a kind of a burden on my heart for the last few months, actually, for a while, as we've been going through this transition and the change through, through Bridges, is um, just the, the fact that change is easy, but transition is hard. And so some of it I'm drawing from experience, from the work that I do, because um, I basically go into businesses and create change and then help them transition through it well. And I think it's really important, but it was more than just bringing a tool. I, really, I felt like God kept stirring me and stirring me to bring this word. So it's not going to be a, a kind of the kind of word that you're used to. I'm not a teacher. Um, it's probably more on the prophetic side. So what I thought as I started to prepare over the, the little while, I've known about it for about a month or so, and I kept I've been reading through um, Exodus because that's where I felt that God wanted me to go. And I kept thinking, well, it's going to be, um, you know, it's all going to be about the Israelites as I was reading it. And so when I sat down to really start putting all the notes together, I thought, right, it's going to be all about the wilderness and pushing through the wilderness and the Israelites. And and God just kept leading me to scriptures all over the place. And none of them were in Exodus. (laughs) So I was like, what are you doing, Lord? And so... Yeah, so just trust the process. I'm trusting God today, and I was trusting God as I was writing this message. And so, yeah, fasten your seatbelts. We're going for a ride. We're going to change gears. So here we go. So um, one of the key things that um, I've come to understand is most of us think of change as something that we want. So when we first get married, when we're about to to have a grandbaby in the family, when you've had a baby... All of those things are exciting, and we all want change. But what we don't realize is change isn't just a simple process. There's, there's some things that we need to go on. Another thing we need to understand is change comes from the fact that God doesn't want us to be the same today th- than we are ne- next year. There's, and, and whenever we see a lack of growth, we, we normally see that it's caused from dysfunction or disease. So when there's no growth, there, there's normally something that isn't right. And so we've got to actually, as human beings, got to understand that part of life is growing. You can either choose growth or you can choose comfort because, unfortunately, this change brings discomfort. So we've got to pick one if you want to have growth in your life. Um, And also, I just wanted to also say it's okay for us to get stuck every now and then, but it's not okay for us to stay stuck. And And that's one of the key things that can happen when we don't transition well. We can get into a place where we just, we get stuck. And it's okay to get stuck, but it's not okay to stay stuck because that's when we suffer unnecessarily. Um, and so for the most of the part, I think when, when I think of uh, change when I got married, um, I was all excited, of course, you know, but the thing is you wake up one day and then you, you do have a different surname and things are different and um, I remember three days after Gary and I were married, he went to go fishing. I finally got him to go and do something by himself because he likes being with me. And then I, I remember crying because I was like, I'm never, ever going to be alone again. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's, th- these are some of the things. And I mean, I love being married to Gary. We've been married for 31 years this, this, uh, this week. So that's pretty good. Um, so this is kind of where God led us to. Is this got working? No? We got a point? Thanks. If you can just move that forward, that would be awesome. This is kind of where God kind of led me to, that there was going to be, that it's actually about a journey, and we need to understand that there is a journey that's going on. It's less about the destination, and it's actually about what God's doing in us as we proceed through this, through this journey that we're going through as a church. Also, there's great um, opportunity to glorify God's name. There's an amazing opportunities right now for each of us to step up and do what God's calling us to do, to use the gifting that we have, and for us to grow as a church and also personally as we, we all enter into this. There's also a danger that God kind of highlighted for me. We, we can open the door for the enemy to come and cause this division and strife and hopelessness as we, we process and proceed through this. 
And there's, there's also a choice that we need to make as well. Um, whether we're partnering with the enemy or we're partnering with God as we process through this. And so we, we, how we talk and the things that we do will make a difference. Um, I felt like there was a commitment that we need to each make, and maybe we we're going to make today. And then there's the destination, because it is about getting somewhere. Um, and with, with anything with God and with, within the church, we're going to get somewhere and God will reveal the next level. So it's an ongoing thing, but there is a destination. So we want to understand where is God, where is he taking us, what is he saying? We don't want to do this journey on our own, and we, we want to get to a destination that glorifies him. So if, if you can go to the third um, slide, please. Um, so the first scripture that God kind of highlighted to me was in the, in the Old Testament, and it was about, about the journey. Um, and it's uh, Deuteronomy 8, verse 2. Remember how the Lord your God has led you in the desert these 40 years, taking away your pride and testing you because he wanted you to know what was in your heart. He wanted to know what was in your heart. He wanted to know if you could obey his commands. He took away your pride when he let you get hungry, and then he fed you with manna, which neither you nor your ancestors have ever seen. And I think that's one of the key things when we start the journey. And I, I know for in my life, what I've seen time and time again, that is when God kind of is nudging me on to go on a journey, I know that it's less about what's going on and where I'm going, and it's more about what's going on inside of me and him working through that process of, of, of refining me and making sure that my heart is right, that he's testing my pride and that he's, he's bringing me to a place of surrender in the journey. So I wanted to encourage you that to, to be open to that. And with each of these, um, and this all happened yesterday, as I was just going through everything and reading it, I felt like the Lord challenged me to be brave and actually to bring the prophetic into each of these. So, I, and so when I prayed into th this particular one, I had this word of release. And I felt like there's people in the church at the moment who are weary from the journey. And, and I also had a picture of two gates on the either side of the wilderness. And there was one, ga one gate right in the beginning where the enemy was standing and blocking the gate. And he was going, don't, you, don't go into the wilderness. Don't take this journey with God because it's just, it's going to be too hard. It's too uncomfortable. It's too whatever it is, the, the thing that he was saying. And I felt like there were some people standing and going, I don't think I've got, I've got the the strength to go on a journey with God, and I'm just, I'm over this, or, or whatever that is. <clears throat> and, and then I saw a, a, some people in a gate at the other end of the, of the wilderness, where people have been on this journey. You've been seeking God, and leaning into God, and just trusting God as you've, you're kind of journeying through life. But, and there was another gateway where the enemy was standing now and going, no, no, keep going around the mountain. You don't belong, you don't belong in your promised land. You just keep going around the mountain. And I felt if there's anyone who related to either of those words, I wonder if you'd be brave and either lift a hand or if you really feel brave, please stand. I just want to quickly pray over that. Anyone feeling like that? Were you, yep, cool, awesome. Yeah, thank you. So, yeah, so just if you'd stand, that would be awesome. And I'm just going to pray. Father God, I thank you, Lord, that you placed that word into my heart for a purpose. And Father, I just pray for... For Angel, whether it's at the, at she's at the gate on, on the beginning of this journey or at the gate at the end of the journey. Father, I pray that we thank you, Father, for the wilderness that tests us and refines us. But also, Father, we thank you that there's a promised land. And Father, I thank you that you would release her into whatever you have for her in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Yeah, two as well. Yep, stand up. Yep, Father, I just thank you. Father, I just thank you for the opportunity to, to step into whatever you have for her, Lord. Right now, I just thank you for that in Jesus' name. Yeah. Is it a bit to go in or out? Go in. Yeah. Father, I thank you for a grace and, and Lord, just wisdom for the journey. I just feel like God's saying you're not going to be alone, that he is with you from every single step awesome. All right, slide four, the opportunities. Um, and so 
the, the Lord led me to 1 Peter 2, 9, and it says, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who, are call, who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And then he also brought me to Ephesians 2.10, which is a scripture that revolutionized my life in 2005. For we are his workmanship, his own masterwork, a work of art created in Christ Jesus, reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, ready to be used for good works, for God prepared for us beforehand, taking the path which he set, so that we could walk in them, living the good life which we he prearranged and made ready for us. And I think this is something we need to understand. Within this moment, we have an opportunity for every single one of us to use the gifting that God has for us and for, you, for us to, to, to actually add value and, and to add our gifting to this church. <clears throat> I think it's a, an incredible season that we're in where it's not just about people kind of leading just from the front, and we, we're all sitting back waiting for them to make the magic happen. You know, even in our, in our worship, it's not for us to just be entertained. We've got to lean in, and we've got to press into what God has at this moment. And that's something that I've been feeling really urgently, is that the, the, it's almost like a word of commission that God g gave me at this point, of every single one of us has, has a part to play, whether it's a small part, and not just here. So, because, I mean... There's probably not a, a, a lot that I do here, and there's m probably more that I do outside in the workplace and what God's called me to do. But, but to understand that we each have a part, thank you so much, we each have a part to play and an opportunity to be used of God in this very place. And so there were two things that, that, that uh, this is what God gave me. Those who have put things, that, that those he has put things in some of you that are burning inside of you, but you don't know what to do with it at the moment. And you're not sure where it fits in, and you're not sure how it will be used in the church. And I just felt like to, for each, for if anyone's feeling like that, to take this opportunity right now to share that ember and to talk to the elders and the, the leaders of the church and to, to actually go, I don't know what to do with it, but I've got this burning thing that's burning inside of me. I feel like... God will be able to use it somehow. And I just really want to encourage you. So if there's anyone that feels that they've got something burning, they don't really know what to do with it, they're not even sure how it's going to be helpful for the church, I just want you to quickly slip your hand up, and I'm just going to pray over you right now. Anyone have that feeling? You saw one over there? Yep. Cool. Yep. Father God, I just thank you for a commissioning, Lord. Father, I thank you for that that ember to be stirred up, Father God. Father, I thank you that you would speak over it, blow over it. I just thank you that you would open the door for opportunities, Lord. Father, I thank you that each one of us can be absolutely useful in this church moving forward. We just thank you for that, Lord, in the name of Jesus. This is really weird, but I'm just trusting God. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> All righty. So the danger, so this is slide number five the danger. Um, and the scripture that kind of God gave to me, if I can find my notes here, is Hebrews 3, 2, sorry, Hebrews 3, 12. Um, so, brothers and sisters, be careful that none of you has an evil, unbelieving heart that will turn you away from the living God but encourage each other every day while it is today. Help each other so none of you will become hardened because sin has tricked you. We all share in Christ if we keep until the end the sure faith we had in the beginning. I'm probably reading more than I had up there. Um, no, I didn't. Okay, just because it's so good. So I'm, I'm, one of my giftings is um, positivity. And so whenever you come across scriptures like this where it's telling us that we have an evil, unbelieving heart, part of me goes, ooh, that's uncomfortable. And I think, oh, isn't there a prettier one for that? And the thing is, is we've got to take the word. <laughs> the word of God isn't just about it being encouraging. It's about challenging us. Um, and there were three things as I was reading through Exodus that I noticed kept cropping up. 
that really made the, the trip for the Israelites really hard. The first thing is the grumbling and the murmuring and the, the moaning about it. Now, let's be honest. We've all been on trips when we've been in the car that sometimes when they take too long, it's hard not to be grumpy about them. But also the criticism. Poor Moses and, and the leaders eventually just got it in the neck all the time. Everyone's got an idea of what it should look like, how it should go, and, and then also the unbelief. If this constantly, um, and I think all of those, that behavior boils down to the fact of, okay, God, wh why are you taking us here? You've, and the, some of the comments that the Israelites kept making was, you've brought us into the desert just to kill us because there weren't enough graves in, in um, Egypt. And, and then they went along and like, oh, we, we'd rather be slaves and eat onions and garlics in, in you know, Egypt. And now we're in the desert. And, you know, they just they kept complaining and murmuring. And that's something we've got to guard our heart against. Yes, it's different. Yes, we don't really know what it kind of looks like. And yes, we've got to trust. But I think the whole time, if we get into a space where we're murmuring and grumbling and thinking, you know, and, and criticizing, it's okay to come with some solutions and to go, hey, this, this, this is happening. What if we did this rather than coming and going, having a moan and not having a solution and being kind of just pointing out the problem? Um, I think one of the things in the workplace, you can say to someone, well, don't come with your problem unless you've got an answer or at least some suggestions about how we can change things. Maybe we should be able to do that here too. <laughs> um, and I think one of the things that I really felt is, and, and I've had to do it. I mean, Gary and I, at the beginning of, at, at the end of last year, the beginning of this year, have felt really unsettled. And we were kind of going, Lord, are we feeling unsettled because our time here is up? We, and, and we just were kind of feeling like, where do we fit? Do we fit here? What's going on? And so we, we've had enough experience in church life to know that we, if God places you somewhere, you don't go anywhere else until God says yes and God says go. And so, you know, if we've, we kind of we even popped in during the holidays and that just to go and have a look and just go, is, is this where we're meant to be? Is God, is this the end of a season? But I think until God says go, we, we're here and we serve here. And I think that's the thing is if, if church is feeling a little bit boring for you, I'd, I'd challenge you and go, well, maybe you're not getting involved <laughs> because, and we've had that as well, just knowing that if you, if you kind of just pewing this, you know, uh, warming the pews and what have you, then that does tend to be feel like you, you feel disconnected and you don't know where you belong. It's probably because you're not in and involved. So I'd encourage you, get involved, lean in. And sometimes maybe, maybe it's because we've, we've bumped up against people and we've rubbed up against them. I will remind you that the Bible says that iron sharpens iron. And a lot of the time, the reason why God places us together is so that we can actually, we can be refined and we can be challenged and we can kind of, be a little bit rubbed in the right way because that's what refines us and makes us better. Um, so I really encourage you, it's a real dangerous place when we, when we are in a, play, play, a place of concession and we're, not, we're, we're, we're starting to get grumpy about it and, and criticize and moan. And so one of the things that I really felt to pray over each of us, I'm not going to get anyone to put their hands up and say, I'm being grumpy. Well, I'll put my hand up. There have been moments. <laughs> um, and it just felt like the word repent came. And so the re repent, not with the waggy finger, but a repent and let's change our mind. Let's, if we were going that way and we were getting a little bit grumpy on the change and the mood, but let's turn that around and turn that murmuring into praying and turn, turn that criticism into solution fo focus. Let's work together. Let's reason together, like the Bible says. And then, let's, and then just offer, offer that to God over the next few days of going, okay, Lord, this is uncomfortable. Where do we go from here? Okay. Um, I'm just going to take you through the slide. And it's really interesting, and I never noticed it before until I was preparing. And, I was, and I, when I read in my notes the Bridges model, I suddenly went, oh, my goodness, the guy's name is William Bridges that actually came up with this model. So if you can turn that slide for me, that would be awesome. And this is just to help us to process the change that's come, that's come and is coming and for us to understand how to transition well. Um, I'll just keep talking and then I'm sure the slides will sort themselves out. 
Um, for the first part of this, the, the slide, and William Bridges came up with this process, is that he understood that change isn't always easy for people because we experience change in three stages. The first stage is actually an ending, it's not beginnings. So we actually have to acknowledge and, and be able to, to understand that we first experience loss as we're moving through the process. Um, the second, then the second stage, which is the neutral stage, you actually is, is a bit of a period of confusion and distress. And that's because, and that's when we get grumpy, you see, because we, we actually don't know, we, we, we know we're not in what we used to have, and we, we're not quite where we want to be, but that messy middle, in the middle, that you kind of go, it's the wilderness. It's, I don't know what it looks like. It isn't quite as clear as I thought it would be. Things aren't, they're, they're a little bit vague, and, and that's okay. If we understand that we're in the messy middle, I call it the, the, the valley of insight, because a lot of insights come, then we can keep our hearts right, and we can process really well. I did have a just thing to... to um, a timer on my phone, and I just realized I haven't done that, so keep me honest here, people. Um, then the third part of it is actually the beginning. That's when we start to see the changes that have been implemented, or the things are starting to find their place, and we're starting to get a rhythm that really works well, and we're starting to see that things are working well. And um, hot tip, no sooner have we got comfortable, guess what? God's going to create a new growth level, so... <laughs> This is a process that in life we've got to get used to. And when we don't, when we're not able to actually transition, we will get stuck. And, it's, and it's, it's okay for us to understand that. If you can go to the next slide and then the next slide, please, that would be awesome. That's it. Again? Okay. So we're going to talk about the endings. And then if you can just let that go again so that we can see. There's, a, there's seven losses that we'll experience as we go through that. If you can just flick them all on, they'll be amazing. And so I'm just going to quickly go through them. And you might identify with one of them, or you might identify with all seven of them. And that'll explain why you're feeling so out of sorts at the moment. And it's okay, because I think the thing is, is if we don't know that this is going on, this is when we can actually we get stuck. So the loss of two is... And this is normally, some of them might relate, some of them might not relate. This is where you kind of, you've had your little space. Maybe you were used to being the pew warmer, and you could just sit there and enjoy the service and have, the, have being worshipped too and enjoy the worship, and then you would just sit and listen and then move on. And maybe God's calling you to actually be more involved, and now suddenly you're like, oh, this is hard. Now I've actually got to prepare my heart before church. I've got to be ready for, you know, and and maybe come, become more prepared or be more in, active or involved. Maybe I've got to come to church more often or what have you. <laughs> so that, that, those kind of things. Attachment. And this is often where you kind of find, so if the things aren't the same anymore. So for many, it'll be hard that Murray's not here and he's not the one that's kind of the one you run to when you need things because there's an attachment there. You actually, you're used to having that you're used to having that kind, those kind of things, um, whatever those attachments are. Meaning. So maybe you had a meaning about what, what Bridges was all about, and because things have changed, now suddenly that meaning is, is off, or you don't know what it means anymore. And so now suddenly, do, where do I fit in? What does this look like? How do we go forward? Maybe there was a sense of control that you had before, that you, you don't have now. Because everything was neat and tidy and went a certain way and it was cool. And so, but now it's not like that. And so, there's, you know, you feel out of control. You don't know where everything fits. Um, a future. So maybe there was a future. Maybe you had an idea of what bridges look like in the future, you know, and, and now things have shifted and changed. And now what does it look like? Um, and identity. So maybe, you know, you, you've had an identity about this is what I was. And this is what happened to me when I had a magazine. And so I, I was the owner and editor of a magazine. It was very fancy. And I thought, I don't care. It doesn't really matter until I didn't have the title. <laughs> then I suddenly was like, oh, so if I'm not the owner and editor, what am I then? Who am I? And, so, and then I realized that actually it did matter. Um, and then it was fine. But it, for a while, it took an adjustment of, so now who am I? So what is, or even as a church, now who are we? What's, 
what, what, is our ch what do we look like? What is our identity as bridges? So we can have this corporately or we can actually have this as an individual. The structure, this is one we'll all be battling with right now. Or, you know, like, okay, so what's the structure now? How does this work? How does it work being team led rather than having being led by one person? So what does that look like? And all of these are gonna make us uncomfortable. And if you can go to the next slide, if, unless we actually process through it, we're going to get stuck. And so there's only four responses that we can have when we get stuck. And so the first response is we can restore. So we can go, okay, so in with, with the old, in with the, like with the old, in with the new. So maybe we're just going to have exactly the same thing, but just a different person. Or exactly the same thing, but just restored. It's going to look a little bit differently. And that's okay. Is that, is that the option that we have here? Or for yourself personally? I'm hoping you're applying this to your personal life as well. Um, do we replace? So this is what we had, and now we replace it with something totally different. So it looks different. And is this where, where we are as bridges, that we actually need to, it needs to be totally different to what we've had before? Um, or we can redesign. So we can take what was, was before, and now you're thinking about each of the parts that maybe you're feeling a lot. Can you, can you redesign that? Is that what God's calling us to do? And then the last one, we need to relinquish. Because some of those things you can't actually have back in that same way. And so we've got to actually re relinquish that loss and actually grieve it and go, things will never be the same again. A little while ago, I helped an organization with a, the, the succession of the CEO to another CEO. And God still uses the prophetic in me, even though it's in a work environment, and, and, and I just trust him that it'll go, it's go down well. And so what I felt to do with, with, and they are Christians, so I didn't explain it was all prophetic, but the action spoke for itself. And so what I felt to do with him is I got all his staff to come around the old uh, CEO, with, and I gave them each a piece of string, and they gave the piece of string to the leader, and they held the other side of the string. And then I just spoke to them about transitioning well, and that there's a loss, and I spoke about all of this. And then I handed each of them a scissors, and I said, the relationship you have with him now needs to end. I want you to cut the piece of string as you do this. And you can imagine, it was, it was quite an impactful moment as they had to cut their ties with, with that leader and then give their piece of string to the new leader. Um, and so, because that relationship, and the, the thing was, normally if they, if they just go away, it's a different relationship because they're not, no longer there. But he was staying in the business as a, and with a different function. And so as we did that process, they've been able to, that ceremony that we had, which is the next slide, that ceremony helped them see and make a mark from when they moved to a different transition. And so often we want to have a ceremony or something that goes, from this moment we move forward. Uh, we've done that with each of our sons. On their 13th birthday, we've, we've kind of made, had a moment where we pulled um, lots of people that we love and respect around them to speak into their lives, to go, today is a day where things move and change. That this is a day where you become a man and that you are now of an age of responsibility. And so you, you move from one section of your life into another section of your life. Those ceremonies help us move and shift. And so we, it's, it's really helpful. Um, so I just wanted to stop over here. And the word that the Lord gave me for this section is that if you've identified with any of those losses, could we just take some time to choose a response right now? Um, and to ask God to show you how to transition through that. Um, so if there's anyone here, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to actually ask you to, to raise your hand or anything like that, but I just want us just to have a moment where you do a little bit of work with the Holy Spirit right now, and I'm just going to pray over you as you do that. So if we can just bow our heads and just ask God, where am I stuck, God? Where, what, which part of these losses am I, am I dealing with right now? Father God, I just declare that whoever has been stuck be unstuck in the name of Jesus. 
I just saw people who have who've been feeling like they've been in sinking sand, and I just see that God is pulling them out and putting them onto solid land. So, Father, I thank you for all of us that have been feeling a loss in some way. Father, I pray that we would recognize it and that we would be able to step out of that place, that we would be able to respond in a healthy way. We just thank you for your covering right now, Lord. We thank you that you would lead and guide us. Lord, we just thank you for the, the, the loss. And the, Lord, we just thank you that it was because it was something special. But Lord, we do. We respond in a healthy way right now in Jesus' name. On to the next slide. Ephesians uh, 3.17, and I've really been loving uh, Doug going through Ephesians, and um, it's really been good. Ephesians is one of my favorites. So, Ephesians 3, what is it? Yes. Yeah. 3.17. And this is, um, I'm actually going to read from 14, even though it's only a verse. So I bow in prayer before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth gets its true name. I ask the Father in his great glory to give you the power to be strong inwardly through his spirit. I pray that Christ will live in your hearts by faith and that your life will be strong in the love and be built on love. And I pray that you and all God's holy people will have a power to understand the greatness of Christ's love, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep that love is. Christ's love is greater than anyone can ever know, but I pray that you will be able to know that love. Then you will be filled with the fullness of God. I really felt that the choice that we need to make is to love one another. Um, you know, because it's, it's really... When we understand that transition is a difficult thing to actually go through, we need to understand that all of us are in different places and we need to be able to support one another through that change. And not, not only for each of ourselves, but I really am mindful and I've been really praying for the leadership of this church. Because I tell you what, just like when you read through, through the, the story with the Israelites, it's, it's it's really difficult when you're trying to hear from God and you're walking along the way and and you right in the front, so everyone's looking at you to make sure that you make all the right decisions and what have you, and you're going, well, I've never been this way before. Okay, God, where are we going? You better show up, Lord. Show us where to go. <laughs> and then when you've got people bumping up, up behind you going, I don't think you're going the right way. <laughs> so I think we're really to be mindful and to love one another, to, be, to understand that God loves us, that he wants us to go in a place that's... that's um, that, that where he can show his power in us. Um, and then obviously Ephesians 4, uh, verse 29 to 34. I'm not going to read the whole thing. But I just the one, um, when you talk, do not say harmful things, but say, but say what people need, words that will help others become stronger. Then what you say will do good for those who listen. And do not make the Holy Spirit sad. The Holy Spirit is God's proof that you belong to him. God gave you the spirit to show that God will make you free when that, day, when that final day comes. Do not be bitter or angry or mad. Never shout angrily or say things to hurt others. Never do anything evil. Be kind and loving to each other and forgive each other just as God forgave you in Christ. Um, we may not have a choice about what's going on around us, whether it's happening over here in the church or inside of our life. But we can choose how we respond to it. And I think at this time when we're going through all this change, it's really necessary for us to be gentle with one another. Because I tell you what, at the moment, there's a lot of stuff. I know a lot of people, there's stuff that people are having to deal with right now. That is just, it just seems like it's on a next level. Um, and one of a book that I've really enjoyed reading by Frank, uh, Victor Frankl, he, one of the quotes that he has is between stimulus, this is what's happening to us, and response, this is how we respond to it. There's a space 
In that space lies our power to choose our response, and in our response lies our growth and freedom. And so it's when we are able to, in the moment, no matter how we're feeling, no matter what's coming at us, to be able to respond in a way that honors God, that honors one another, that is gentle and kind and loving, because that if we are the we represent the God of love, that, sh- that is how we should operate. Um, and so, and Moses said it a different way in Deuteronomy 30, and, he's, and basically he said, look, today I offer you life and success, death and destruction. I command you today to love the Lord your God and to do what he wants you to do and to keep his commands, his rules, and his laws. And then you will live and grow in number, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you've entered. So today... We get the the choice of of life or death, and he asks us to choose life. So another picture that I had was people opening up a toolbox and receiving tools, and then some came from their heads, some came from their hearts, and some just appeared in their hands. And this is the season for equipping, for our times of intimacy of God is where we get tooled up, and this this is what is in it for bridges, I feel like God is releasing ideas and innovation and solutions, even for outside the church. Um, just if, if people felt like, felt like they want to have this word, I feel like I want to declare this over you, if you can stand up. Um, and just all together, I'm just going to do a general place. If you're feeling like that you want to be tooled up by God, I felt like there were people in, in this church that are ready to receive tools from God. I saw some coming out of their heads, like a toolbox out of your head, that they're going to be ideas and innovations and and things that you'll be able to create. I saw some coming out of their hearts. It's relational. It's about how you deal with people. Um, And then I saw some that appeared in their hands that are really practical. So if if that's something you desire or if that's something you, you feel like you've got, I would encourage you to stand up, and I'm going to pray for you. Come on, guys, upon the street. Yes! Thank you, Jesus. Okay. <laughs> um, it, it will require you to collaborate with people because God is going to give us each a piece of the puzzle. I really felt that. So, so people that you don't even know or understand or maybe don't even think the same as you, God is going to require that for us. Father God, I just thank you and I stand with everyone else, Lord. Father, I see tools coming out of people in this church, Lord, whether it be innovative ideas whether it be um, relational, whether it be practical, Father God. Father, I thank you that Bridges would stand apart as a church that is innovative, that is... um that shakes the world and that does things differently. And we, so we just thank you for that, Father, in Jesus' name. Okay, thank you. We're coming in for a landing, I promise. <laughs> okay, on to the next slide, please. The commitment. This, is one, this one's a quick one. Um, John 17. Um, I'll read just the tw- uh, verse 23 and 26. I will be with, with, I will be with in them. I don't know. I must have messed that one up. Let me see. Um, and you will, I will be with them, and you will be in me, so that they will be completely one. Then the world will know that you've sent me and that you love me just as as much as I lo- as you love me. And I show them what you are like, and I will. Sh- Sorry, I've messed up my words. What did it say over there? I will show them what you are like, and I will show them again. Then they will have the same love that you have for me, and I will live in them. And from this, it was just, it, it, it's about that the unity that we come together. It doesn't mean that we have to agree on everything, but we will have different ways of seeing things, but it is talking about the unity that we need to have. So I really wanted us to have a commitment today that we're going to lean into that, that we, we want to see um, us come together and, and commit to the unity that we have. Unity doesn't mean we always agree and do things the same, but it does mean that we're actually leaning forward to do what God wants to do. And then quickly, the next slide. So part of, in that middle neutral ground, there's, there's four Ps and three Cs that I'm going to quickly go through. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on them. So basically, the four Ps are purpose. As we move through this, and and this is something that we'll be looking to the leadership for, but 
all of us. And I think one of the things that if you don't know, the leaders have been amazing and every Friday update they're going, if you have any questions, come and talk to us. And this has been an invitation from the pulpit ongoingly of being able to do that. So it's about understanding the purpose, why are we doing this, and I've, I, I feel like I'm clear on what that is because it's been communicated really well why this is happening. It's a picture. We have a picture. It's, it's a bit blurry, but that's okay because it's a new thing and we know where it's going. But there's a pretty clear picture of what it looks like and what God's trusting us to unfold. There's a plan. Um, and so that's been spoken about. I'm probably less clear about that, but I'm going to come and chat to someone and make sure I understand the plan. And then the part. Each of us has a part to play in this. So we can't be spectators in this. We need to all lean in. And then the two C's stand for care and concern, is understanding that we actually need to, not just, not just for each other, but to be able to look out for one another and for our leaders as well. Because very often, we often forget, we all want to be looked after, but who's looking after the leaders? Um, and then the next slide, which is the last one, except for the one at the end that says, off you go through your journey. So the destination, um, it's direction, not intention, that determines our destination. It's a quote by Andy Stanley. And I think that's one of the key things. And for me, it was John 15, 7 verse, uh, to verse 17. If you remain in me and follow my teachings, you can ask anything you want, and it will be given to you. You should produce much fruit and show that you are my followers which brings glory to my Father. And I've told you these things so that you can have the same joy I have and so that your joy can be the fullest possible joy. This is my command. Love each other as I have loved you. You did not choose me. I chose you. And I gave you this work. Go and produce fruit, fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you anything you ask for in my name. This is my command. Love each other. I wonder if everyone can just stand so I can pray. Father God, I release joy, peace, and wisdom over the elders and leadership of this church. Father, I pray that their role would be a, a role of joy. But Father, I also thank you, Lord, that this church would be known by its fruits and that we would produce fruit that would sustain, feed, and, and be a blessing to Cambridge and the greater area. Father, I thank you that we would have grace for this journey. Father, I thank you that we would be, have wisdom and that you would bring solutions for us, not just problems. We thank you for the, the answers to those things. Father, I thank you that love would be the hallmark of this church. Father, I, I first pray a release again over anyone who is stuck and declare breakthrough of relationships, finances, and innovation over bridges right now in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for our leadership team. I pray for wisdom. I pray for clear direction. I pray for a coming together and a unity that they've never known before. I pray, Lord, also for the rest of our church. I pray for the men in this church, that they would be filled with vision and direction and Father, just a zest for life. I pray for those who have been shackled and hamstrung to be released in the name of Jesus and the power of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray for the women in this church, for a release of new songs, not just not in the natural, but in the spiritual, to flow from their bellies. I speak joy and peace over them, Father God. And Father, I pray for the youth of this church to rise up in wisdom and strength, and I pray that you would, they would build an altar for the presence of God, that we would have a legacy in this church. And Father, I just declare this and pray this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen.